My name is Julie. Welcome to the Knit Together podcast. This is episode four. Um, it's been about two weeks since I last made a video, so I figured I would come on and give you an update. Uh, this week, I'm wearing my Christmas sweater that I knit for Christmas 2022. Um, I talked about it, I think, in my first episode. So if you want to hear more, I talked about it more there. I'm wearing this sweater today because it's red uh, and today's Lunar New Year. So uh, a traditional color to wear is red. Um, I have a couple of non-knitting things to talk about today. So if you're only interested in the knitting content, um, I can put a little timestamp uh, for you to skip to um, if you're not interested in listening about that. Um, if you're interested in hearing about the non-knitting stuff, um, I have just a couple of things that I wanted to share, um, things that I'm looking forward to, things that are sort of crafting related, um, but not necessarily knitting related. Um, the first is a class that I went to last weekend. Um, I am a member of the Philadelphia Guild of Hand Weavers. Um, I don't weave. Um, but they are sort of like my most local, um, like fiber guild. So last weekend the guild hosted a potluck brunch and a shirtlace button making class. So it was really nice to meet a lot of the other guild members. Um, I've only gone to a couple of like small meetings in the past, so uh, there was really, really good attendance. Uh, so I got to meet some really interesting people. The second half of the meeting was the shirtlace button class. So we learned how to use um, like a washer basically, embroidery, th embroidery thread, um, and make these really neat buttons. Um, so this is something that was surprisingly really simple to make. Um, the instructor showed us like a lot more complicated designs that she'd done that include like beading um, and just like more complicated patterns. So I really enjoyed the class and this is something that um, maybe I will dedicate some more time to later. Um, at the beginning of the episode, I also mentioned that um, I'm wearing this sweater, not because it's Christmas time, but because it's red. Um, so this weekend is Lunar New Year. Uh, so my family background is Chinese, so we celebrate Chinese New Year. Um, Lunar New Year is sort of the more uh, broad name, especially since the uh, a lot of different cultures and heritages celebrate um, a type of new year at this time and the timing of the holiday is based on the cycles of the moon. Um, traditionally we eat dumplings um, so I think the, the the reasoning for that is that the dumplings are shaped like old ancient like Chinese money or or like gold nuggets or something like that so if you eat um, dumplings um, the superstition or the tradition says that you'll be rich in the new year. Um, we also eat a lot of um, foods or we eat a lot of like desserts that have um, like mochi kind of uh, dough incorporated in them. So um, that mochi kind of dough is made from glutinous rice flour. So it's very, very sticky. It doesn't actually have gluten. It's still made from rice, and the reason for that is because in Chinese, in Mandarin, um, the words for year and sticky are homonyms. They both sound like mian, um, and so to celebrate the coming of the new year, um, we eat sticky, like food made from the sticky dough. Um, so one of those things is tong yue, which are I describe them as like hot mochi balls. So if you had, I think people would be most familiar maybe with like mochi ice cream, um, where there's like a scoop of ice cream wrapped in this like really sticky, um, this really sticky dough. Um, so instead of like completely frozen solid, um, and instead of being filled with ice cream, it's filled with something like a sesame paste or peanut paste or other like, like nutty kind of pastes. Uh, they're boiled in water, so we eat them hot. Um, the the roundness of the tanya um, symbolize like having a whole family together and like a, a sense of like completion. Um, 
and then we also eat something called niango which is um literally like year cake um but me growing up i didn't realize that it was supposed to be year cake i thought it was like sticky cake um because those those words are homonyms um and that is sort of basically like a whole sheet of 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 mochi um of like the mochi dough um we typically my family puts like raisins in it um to add like some sweetness um and like a different texture so yeah so this afternoon i will probably be making some nyanko because i have um red bean paste which i love and um a bag of the glutinous rice flour before i jump into fo's um since i'm wearing a christmas sweater it's not super festive and i've also showed it before um i figured i would show you something else that i've been wearing this week a lot um and that is this shawl here um i don't think i can get it all in frame but it is a shawl that i knit in 2021 um it is called the scout shawl and it's designed by a designer called Florence Sperling. Um, I made this shawl out of Knit Picks Palette, which is a fragrant weight, I think it's woolen spun, two ply yarn, um, really great for color work. Um, and it is basically, I think Florence's intention was to create a knit shawl that was inspired by quilting. So you can see that there are um, the different sections of different motifs in different colors. Um, I've been wearing it because I am like su I'm super proud of this shawl. Um, it was probably like it's it's probably the most intense color work that I've done. It was also knit flat. Um, it's the only project I've knit um, like sharing a color work flat on, um, which was challenging. But I appreciate the challenge. Um, my favorite motif is this red and white one. Um, I like absolutely adore it. I love, I love the diamonds and I love the squares. I also really like the first one that I did, this green one. Um, but, but yeah. So this is knit all in one piece. It's not like, you don't knit blocks and seam them together. Um, you start from one end and knit all the way to the other end. Um, it's really warm. It's really cozy. Um, and I think it's like a good, it's a good, like, showpiece um it looks really cool so um i love wearing it in the winter i have a lot of things to show today um which i think is good um i have finished a lot of um projects which is um good because i don't i you know i have a tendency to let things um just hang out but it's good to not um well, this is going to be a finished object, but I didn't finish weaving the ends, but I hope you forgive me. Um, I won't show it again because I think I've showed it every single podcast so far, but it, the knitting is done. So this is the Rift Tea. Um, I've shown it in, I, like I said before, I think every episode so far. Um, it is a top uh, designed by Jackie Cieslack, knit from the bottom up. Um, it has twisted rib on the cuffs and hem um, and stocking it, uh, for the body. Um, I knit this project using this yarn here. This is the leftover I have, um, which is from Middlebrook Fiberworks. It's their vintage number eight, which is a 40% Shetland, 40% fine wool, 10% silk, 10% rainy blend. Um, the... Um, owner of Middlebrook Fiberworks classifies it as a two-ply sport DK weight, um, which I think is accurate. Um, sport and DK sort of feel the same to me, um, but from a metric standpoint, um, there are 286 yards in 100 grams. So... So yeah, probably like DK from just a number standpoint. That sort of sounds like DK. It's close to worsted. Um, this is the first top that I've knit that um, transitions from like in the round to flat knitting. Um, and I've never really knit anything like that because I didn't think I was gonna like it. Uh, because I don't like I don't like knitting stock knit flat. Um, and I was. 
you know, I think that judgment is accurate. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> it's also the first drop shoulder top that I've knit. In previous episodes, I mentioned that I thought it might be too short um, and that I would go back and like add some length to the bottom. But after thinking about it more, it's fine. It will, it is like pretty cropped, but you know, it's a summer tee um, or like a warm weather t-shirt. So that's okay. Um, I would prefer to just leave it as is. The way I was thinking about it, I probably would have to Kitchener it if I just um, try to lengthen it, and I have um, not a lot of interest in doing that. So, so yeah, I'll weave in the ends. Um, I had the block, it's still, I typically weave in my ends before I block, um, just because um, I've heard that weaving in the ends and then blocking lets the ends to sort of um, like block into their like block into the fabric that way they're less likely to come out um so so yeah um so that's my rift tea finally done hopefully the next time it comes on the podcast um will be when i wear it the next project that i finished are my festive mittens um so this is a pattern from scandier knits um it was her 2022 festive mitten mystery knit, mystery knit along. Um, it came out in eight clues over the course of December. I think the last time I had a podcast, I just had to finish one of the thumbs, so I finished that. Um, I knit this out of Rauma Phenol um, and used less than one skein in each of the colors to finish the mitts. I've talked about it a lot, I think, in the last episodes, so um, I won't talk about it too much. These are the first Selbu style mittens that I've knit, um, and I'm really proud of them. They are like a tad long, um, so if I were to knit this type of style mitten, I probably wouldn't knit them quite as long, um, but I'm really proud of this. Um, I think it looks beautiful. Um, it blocked out really nicely. As much as I love like the motifs, oh, they also match my sweater because um, it's the same like festive collection of motifs. Um, it's sort of in that collection. I am obsessed with um, just like the general pattern on the palms of the hands. Um, I don't know why. I think I just must really like diagonals uh, and diamonds and stuff like that. Because I, I mentioned in the Scott Shawl that the diamonds were also my favorite motif. Um, they're just like so satisfying to knit. So, so yeah, the festive mitten um, mystery knit along mitts by Skinny Knits are finally off the needles. These are actually blocked. Um, so, so yeah, super proud of these. Super happy that they're done. Um, and put them in the FO pile. Um, the last um, finished object of the episode are my Emma Woodhouse socks. They are still sort of damp. Um, you don't know that. I only I know that. Um, these are a test knit for um, Emma Barnaby. Um, she designed, I think, 13 pairs of socks um, in 2022, and these are supposed to be released this year. Um, it is a cuff down sock with a really neat um, lace pattern. So I don't have sock blockers, so I'll just have to show it to you on my hand because um, I'm not going to show you my feet, um, with this really neat um, like lace motif going down the front of the foot. The sock pattern is written with a standard um, like heel flap and gusset. I, I like these socks a lot. Um, the yarn that I used is a, I think it's a 7525 Superwash sock yarn that I hand dyed myself using great Kool-Aid. I believe it's from Cloudborn. Um, which is a brand that um, Web sold. Um, but as I was getting into knitting, I think Cloudborn was stopping their business. They, they weren't really running anymore. So Web's always had them on clearance. So I picked up a lot of their yarns. Um, I did, there's actually another project that I'll, I'll talk about um, that's from Cloudborn. I'm really happy with these socks. Um, they've definitely been through the process of making them has been has had its ups and downs um none of which are really this the sock or the design's fault they're all my fault um 
but I'm very happy to have these done. I think last time I was on probably like, I did definitely, I was probably somewhere on the foot. Um, so I just need to do a couple of repeats, just put some time in and finish it off. Um, I knit these on size one and a half, um, nine inch circulars. I had to use four different sets of knitted needles. Now that I'm thinking, four different sets of knitted needles to finish these socks, now that I think about it. Um, I had started with the Addy Easy Knit, I think they're called. Um, it's basically a nine inch circular where one of the needles is longer than the other. And I think you're supposed to hold the longer needle in your right hand and that helps with dexterity. I bought that in DC and thought I was gonna love it. Um, I had it in my, I had the needles in my inventory for a really long time, finally picked up these socks, started to use them, and then realized that moving from Chowgu needles to those needles um, was really challenging because the Addies are a lot more blunt. So um, I probably got uh, like this much down the first sock before I was like, I can't do this anymore, like this is not working for me. So then I went to a local yarn shop in Philly and purchased the, I think it was a Knitter's Pride. Um, it was one of their like brown, um, like wood laminated needles. It might've been a ginger, um, but it might've been a different Knitter's Pride um, style. And those were a lot sharper, so those were great. Um, unfortunately, those needles, I talked about this probably in my first episode, those needles and the project that they were on um, went through the wash um, so the yarn got really tangled um, the needles both completely broke uh, and that's why at that point I was already on the second sock but at that point I like put this product in time out and was like I cannot so um, that was when I was down in North Carolina <laughs> and uh, visiting a friend we went to a local yarn shop to him and uh, found Chowgu shorties. So on the flight back from North Carolina to Philly, I painstakingly detangled the yarn and tried to pick up all the stitches off of like the broken needles on my new Chowgu minis. Um, and those ones are pretty good. I mean, I I'm, I'm normally use Chowgus um, for like almost all my knitting. So the needle tips are familiar to me. It's the, the nine inch circulars are still, I don't know if I'm in love with them. Um, and I think I just need to use them like more than even just knitting this one pair of socks. Um, so so those worked from, uh, from on the second sock from like somewhere on the, the leg down to the decreases. Um, I got through some of the decreases on the nine inch circular, but eventually like the circumference of the nine inch circular just isn't, it, nine inches is too is too much for um, your like decreased toe. So I ended up doing the rest of the decreases sort of magic loop um, on my size one chow goes with like a really long cord. So yeah, these, this pair of socks has really been through the ringer, um, broken needles, needles that just didn't work out for me. The moving from the nine inch circular to the, to magic loop is, you know, expected. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, grumpy about that. So anyway, these, these socks, um, I love them. Uh, they are still wet, so I'm gonna let them dry and then I will be wearing them. This is my first ever finished pair of socks for myself. Um, I've knit one other pair of socks for, as a gift. Um, and then besides that, I have a small collection of unfinished uh, single socks. So yeah, uh, it's been oh, quite a few minutes since I said what these are called. These are the Emma Woodhouse socks by Emma Barnaby. So that's what I finished. I don't really think I have too many other whips that I've talked about um, on the podcast that are still ongoing. So I think that's good. I think that's good progress. Nice to check things off the list. I have a couple of like languishing whips. At this point, they're probably unfinished objects that I figured I would share because um, I do still want the finished object for both of them. Um, and coincidentally, they both have like a similar issue. So um, this is this must be the episode of Skein Deer um, because the sweater I'm wearing 
Um, my mittens and this UFO are all Stranger Designs. Um, this is called the Ultra Yoke Cardigan. It has a circular yoke um, along with little raglans um, after the yoke, um, collar work design on the yoke, and I knit this out of Jameson Smith um, two-ply jumper weight yarn, um, which is a two-ply um, like fingering sport weight um, woolen spun yarn from not only the Shetland Islands in Scotland, but also Shetland sheep on those islands. I think what happened with the sweater was that I didn't hit gauge originally, um, so I knit a different size. I knit a bigger size. Um, I probably also went up the needle size to do the collar work yoke because uh, a lot of times my collar work um, will be tighter. Uh, so I'll go up a, a needle size just to combat that. And then by the time I got to the body on the size that I was knitting, it was it just became way too big. Um, so I've already torn out the body once. In my room, I have a, a cake, a sizable cake of uh, what used to be the body. Um, that's been um, like the kinks have been conditioned out of it and stuff like that. So I think I stopped working on this because I wanted to decide if I was going to take all of these body stitches and like decrease down or if I wanted to um, like rip back to above the underarm split and remove some of these raglins um, or even possibly like remove some of the um, like cast on stitches under the armpits. But as it stands right now, it's it's just too big. Um, even the sleeve is ginormous. Um, it's just too big for me. Um, so, so yeah, this is a sweater that I am probably gonna start working on again this year. Um, I do really want this sweater. I think it's like a very lightweight sweater and I only have one um, other like light cardigan that I've made for myself. Um, that one was the first the first cardigan I made, the second sweater that I ever made, and it has its own host of issues. I would love to have this as a finished object this year. The next sweater that is an unfinished object um, is something that I worked on uh, late last year, probably when I got my most recent COVID booster, I think is when I wanted to work on this. Um, this is a ranunculus. Um, ranunculus is a top-down circular yoke sweater um, that is very popular on Ravelry, um, it is always on Hot right now, and it's a really nice sweater to knit. Um, I knit this, um, with two strands held double of Cloudborne Highland Fingering yarn in this neat teal color. Um, all of this sweater in my hand right now is 200 grams. I think each, each skein is like it's a light fingering yarn, so each skein is like 4 or 50 yards probably. Um, so, and, and you knit the sweater on size like 10 and a half needles, so it, it goes pretty quickly. The problem with the sweater is that it, it's also too wide in the body. Um, it is just sort of not the look I'm going for, and it's, it's too wide and it's too short. Um, I do have more of the yarn in my stash, but I would love to make the 200 grams that are already like committed to this project go as far as possible and I want that to go I want it to go as far as possible I don't want it to create fabric you know this way I want it to create fabric more lengthwise um so I have a similar dilemma for this sweater it's unfortunate because I did really labor intensive I-cord bind offs for both sleeves and the body <laughs> um but you know that's okay it's whatever I think this sweater also has raglins um, between the yo circular yoke and the sleeve separation. So maybe if I go back to where the circular yoke ends, um, I'll have to do some measuring. It looks pretty wide even there. But if I rip back to where the circular yoke ends and then knit some plain rounds, um, so the like the amount of rounds I would have done in the raglan, but instead of increasing at in those rounds, just knitting them um, straight. Uh, with no increases, um, that might help because it is knit, like I said, it's knit on like 10 and a half size needles. Um, so, and if there are eight increases on each round, if I eliminate, you know, even if there were only like three increase rounds, that's 24, that's 24 stitches. 
and at a gauge like this i think 24 stitches is more than four inches um if i can cut out like four inches of width uh even that much would be helpful so ridiculous um i will be sad to uh, this is also blocked um because before i make like decisions like oh i want to rip out half a sweater um i'll typically block them just because it's it doesn't take that much time it doesn't take that much effort and it's possible that i might like it um in both of these cases i do not i think in most cases i don't um but that's okay um when i do rip it out like i did for the ultra yoke cardigan um i will recondition the yarn so that typically means um like winding it somehow um since i started spinning i made myself a pvc nitty knotty um which is a contraption to like wind a hank of yarn to wind from like a ball or a sweater into a hank um and then i'll just soak the hank in water um give it a couple of snaps to get all the ramen noodle kinks out um, and then let it dry um before i had the nitty knotty i would just do it like on my like forearm so like from my palm down to like my elbow and just go like this um i've also used a book in the past um the nitty knot is really really nice <clears throat> and i made it using like ten dollars of supplies from home depot um it's all pvc so it's i learned it from um cabinets she has a really really old video where she um teaches you like how to calculate the length of a nitty knotty and like what you would need it's just simple like pipe and adapters fittings um the people at home depot like cut the pvc for me too which is really nice and then from the hank um i put my hank on my amish swift um which is not an umbrella swift i think it's less cumbersome and less finicky than a umbrella swift and then my ball winder and wind into a ball and go from there so so yeah I would love to wear this ranuncula soon. So those are my UFOs. So these are things that have been lingering for a really long time. I'll sort of transition a little bit um, into a project that is sort of on the line between UFO, unfinished object, and a whip, um, a work in progress. Um, that is this blanket. <laughs> um, this is a blanket um, the pattern is called Northeasterly, and the designer is Skaneanigans. Um, I am making a scrappy Northeasterly blanket um, using different scraps that I have. Basically knit like one strip and then join uh, a new strip on as you go. Um, and eventually there will be multiple, multiple strips. And hopefully, you know, the yarns that I use will have stories attached to them. And I can look back and be happy. This is gonna take a long time, so I'm not at all um, sad that it's towing the line between unfinished object and a whip. It'll probably be an unfinished object for for years. Um, so, for example, this first block here, this purple, um, is the first yarn that I ever dyed. Um, I used it to make the flax that I wore in a recent episode. Um, it's Patton's Classic Worsted, dyed with great Kool-Aid. Um, the next block is my first hand spun. Um, it is, you can even tell that the, the thickness of the yarn is bigger. It sort of bulges out, but that's okay. Um, it was my first hand spun. Um, the next one is a yarn that uh, is Malibu Rios. Um, I knit a hat for my grandma using this yarn, and this is the leftover. Um, and sort of all goes like that. Um, the, as you can see in the uh, earlier, not this week, um, but I started a stripe two, um, but then for some reason or another decided to go back and like elongate stripe one. Um, the progress that I made is this chunk here. Um, this is also some hand spun that I had. Um, I needed to clear some bobbins. Um, I had some like extra singles on some bobbins and wanted to clear them off, so I just applied them together um and made this weird yarn that i only had a, like i don't know how many grams i had but probably like 10 maybe less than that um and figured i would just 
add a stripe to this. Uh, so this yarn has not gone into any project, um, but it's a hand spun that already has like more improvements than the first hand spun I did, which is good. Um, the, it's a two ply, so the two plies are different yarn, or different like fibers. The grayish color is um, some Knit Picks Wool of the Andes um, in one of their rovings. Um, and then the other color is a like cotton candy kind of color. Um, I think it's Corydale Blaze. And I dyed it, I hand dyed it with food coloring probably. I dyed the, uh, the comb top. And then at the very end, it turned out there was different yarn at the very end. I think this is, it's um, just a little bit of border luster, really local to me border luster. Um, when I was learning how to spin, uh, the person who was teaching me um, had access to some like raw border luster fleece. Um, and so she taught me how to like wash it. But that's really only like the last couple rounds here. You can see that it's like visually much more um, like fluffy. It the the fiber clearly hasn't been like combed um, and aligned because in comparison, like I mean, it might be the nature of the border luster, but um, the the white, blue, purple up here, the cotton candy colors are a lot more they're a lot more tamed uh, than the border luster down here. So yeah, so this is my northeasterly. Um, I don't work on it very often. I think there's an argument to be made of like keeping your scraps to make repairs as well. The other day I saw the little chunk of hand spun that I had and I was like, I need to just like get rid of this somehow. So I put it in here because I don't need to keep it to make any repairs. Um, it is a pattern, this, this northeasterly pattern is something that every time I pick up again, I have to go back to the pattern and, and remind myself like how to do the chevron pattern. Um, which isn't a huge deal, um, and it I, I think it's worth it. The chevrons are a little bit more interesting than strips, than just garter, straight. So, and then my brand new, my brand new work in progress is a tangled mess. I'm transferring from uh, bamboo needles, which I started on, to my chow goose. This is the very, 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 very early beginnings of a ripple bralette. Uh, Rebel Bralette is a pretty popular pattern from Jessie Made Designs. I have these two yarns. Um, these are leftovers from my Vertices Unite by um, Stephen West. They are Knit Pit Gloss in the Bear colorway and this Plum, this purple color. Um, according to Jessie Made's pattern, I don't think I have enough of any of my leftovers to make a whole bralette, so I figured I would stripe. So that's why you can see the very beginnings of the like purple and then the white. Um, I think I'm just gonna stripe purple and white because I have enough to do that. Um, I thought a lot long and hard about what yarn I was gonna use for this project because there are a lot of like unique considerations, I think. Um, it has to be next to skin soft because it's basically like your first, for me, it's going to be my first layer. Um, so I wasn't going to use something like Let Low Be or like the Jameson and Smith um, jumper weight two ply. Um, it also, I think, needs to be like stretchy and able to bounce, uh, but also strong. I think in the original pattern, she uses a sock weight yarn, like a 75 25. I don't know if it's superwash or just like merino um, nylon blend. And she also gives recommendations for budget weight yarns, or for budget yarns. And I think Netflix gloss was listed on there. Um, and after thinking about it some more, I think it makes sense. The um, the silk is has similar qualities as the nylon. Um, so it's gonna provide some of that strength. Um, and it also provides a luster, which is nice. Um, so we'll see. Um, the pattern recommends knitting with like, it's like 10 inches of negative ease. Um, so I did that. Right now my circle is approximately this big and my, um, like bust measurement is definitely not this small. So, um, we'll see. I, I'm looking forward to this a lot. Um, I mentioned this is like a huge tangled mess, partly because I have two needles going on. Um, I started with my clover bamboo size two needles, um, but the cord was getting in my way. It's so long. 
um, and not very flexible. And then the bamboo needles were getting really hard to like shift these tiny, tiny stitches on. So last night I found, I found my Chaogu size twos and found a, I actually found a cord that's short enough too, which is good. Um, so I'm in the progress of transferring them over, but I think I fell asleep while doing that last night. So um, I will uh, probably finish that up today. Um, this is going a lot slower than I thought it was going to, because uh, partly because I'm not, I'm knitting English style for this, because um, it's all ribbing. Um, I still haven't really gotten the hang of knitting ribbing continental. Um, so I've accepted that this is just gonna take a while. Um, I think another reason why it's taking long, at least right now, is that the one by one ribbing requires you to move from like knit to purl, knit to purl, knit to purl, um, every other stitch or every stitch, I guess. Um, but the main like body of the bralette is going to be a three by three. So hopefully with that, I'll have some more momentum. At least I can like knit three really fast and then switch to purl and then purl them all. So yeah, this is a ripple bralette. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is that for ribbing stripes, when you change color, um, you continue the rib pattern, you get little um, like blips um, of your new color in the old color. Um, and to avoid that, um, I used a technique where you, it's not really a technique, it's barely, it's super simple. Um, you basically just knit the, the color change row all knits. Um, that sends all the like pearl bumps, the blips to the back. And so you get really nice um, color transitions. Um, so that's a super simple trick um, to avoid um, the blips. Even if you had blips, it's not a big deal. Um, but since I had it, you know, at the top of my mind, I, uh, I employed that. Um, I'll probably try to do like similar size stripes all the way up. And, and yeah, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to cut the yarn after every stripe. Um, I don't think I will. Like each stripe is like a centimeter, maybe. It's definitely not an inch. Um, so I don't think I'll be too bothered if I just carry the yarns up. Um, if it does become an issue, I will cut and just be the bottom ends. I have one last thing to talk about. I think this is gonna be a long episode. Um, and that's some spinning that I've been working on. So, uh, um, last year in November, um, I got to go to the Fiber Festival of New England. Um, a couple episodes ago, a couple episodes ago, I showed some Shetland yarn um, that I spun up, um, and I had bought, I would purchased the fiber there. Um, I purchased um, a couple big bags of um, like roving from Bartlett Yarns as well. Um, Bartlett Yarns is a mill in Maine. Um, and this is what the card from at least this bag looked like. Um, they're a mill in Maine. They um, had these big bags of roving. Um, they're not breed specific, um, but they're a lot of them are like heathered. So this one I loved. Um, it has like purples and blues and pinks and like little necks too um, of purples and blues and pinks. For some reason, I feel like I could only find one bag of this, um, so I only purchased one bag of this. Um, but I've been spinning it up. They they sold bags of eight ounces. I normally think of fiber in terms of grams. My foot's falling asleep. A hundred grams is three and a half ounces, so that means two hundred grams is seven ounces. Uh, so this is more than or when I finish spinning up the entire um, bag, it'll be more than two hundred grams of yarn. So I'm excited. I, I don't know what I'm gonna make with it yet, um, but this is what the singles are looking like. I'm trying to spin them pretty thin um, just to optimize the amount of like finished yarn I'll have, um, to optimize the, the yardage of finished yarn I have. Um, there's already like nice um, like variation. It's, it has nice like depth and, um, and interest. I was thinking that I could, um, these are all just hypotheticals, um, I could probably extend the yardage even more if I held it with um, like mohair. But of course I'm also not buying yarn, I'm trying not to buy yarn, so I have, I'd have to work with what I already have. 
and I think I only have like two mohairs. One of them is I bought at a, a garage sale and I don't love it. It's on a cone, so I have tons of it. Um, but it, well, first of all, it's like a camel colored. So I don't think I would go with this. I also have this mohair, which these might go well together. Um, this I purchased for my first sweater ever and that first sweater ever has not been finished. Um, it was a Jessie Mae design actually, um, like this sheer v-neck sweater. Um, I just never finished it. Wasn't in love with the sweater. Um, not the sweater's problem, it was my fault. Um, I think also um, the local yarn shop person I was working with sort of, I don't know, I felt almost a little pressured to buy it. So um, that was a good learning experience. Um, but anyway, I spent a fortune on the yarn too. <laughs> Um, so I have all this mohair is what I'm trying to say, um, and if I use, if I pair the mohair with, um, my finished yarn, this is not the finished yarn, um, I could make the, I could make, uh, the hand spun go further as well. Um, I had some designers that I've been looking at recently, or some patterns that I've been looking at recently are, um, Love Note from Tin Can Knits, which is designed with probably a fingering weight yarn and mohair held together. Um, I've always wanted to knit that. People like have really good things to say about that sweater. It has like lace hearts going across the yoke. Um, and then I've also been looking at um, petite knit sweaters. She uses a lot of mohair and um, non-mohair held together. I've never actually knit any of her designs, um, but people rave about them. So um, that might be worth giving a shot as well. So that's what I've been spinning. That's what I've been knitting. Um, it's already getting dark out. Um, it's still 11 o'clock. I think it's just super overcast. And yeah, um, I normally end the episode with a quick tip. And so I figured since I have a sweater out to show you, um, something that I, I think I actually mentioned it last episode briefly as well. Um, but for my sweaters, um, especially pullovers, um, I try to mark the back um, with just slip stitch crochet. That way it's easy to distinguish front and back. Because um, sometimes if it's like dark out or you're tired or whatever, um, the if you did German short rows, or if you did short rows generally to like lift the back, um, it, it might be hard to tell. Um, but putting a little visual indicator makes it a lot easier. I don't do this for like a cardigan, um, like this this cardigan, like clearly has a front. Um, I'm not gonna do it for that, but um, for pullovers, um, I like to do that. So that's my quick little tip. It's um, super simple. I normally, if there's like ribbing, I'll just um, slip stitch into the base of the ribbing. Um, it doesn't take a lot and I use like whatever scraps I have. I try to use um, like a woolly yarn so that it really felt in there. Um, and yeah, it's not visible typically from the back, um, so it's just a helpful reminder for you. All right, um, I have talked plenty, I think, today. Um, I will edit this video, put it on the internet. Um, if you enjoyed the content, you can subscribe for more videos. Um, if you leave a comment, I would love hearing what you thought. I'll also leave my um, Instagram and Ravelry in the description box below if you want to connect there. Um, yeah, I'll be back in probably about two weeks with an update. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.